Hello, hello, friends. Welcome back to Natural. So today is a different type of video. I decided to share what I do every single day. These are my daily practices that I've committed to for optimal performance. I really hope they are helpful and provide some utility for you. I am not a fitness expert, personal trainer, nor am I a doctor, nor am I a nutritionist. So please consult your doctor, consult your fitness trainer, as well as an expert nutritionist if you choose to embark on any new fitness regimen, dietary regimen, as well as a skincare regimen. So now that we have that out the way, let's get to the daily practices that I personally utilize to show up in the world as my best self. The very first thing for me upon rising is smiling. Regardless of whether or not I want to get up, whether or not I'm feeling my best, the smile is my way of being grateful and appreciating another opportunity to give the day my best. And that is really a great way for me to start every morning because I am immediately aligned with optimism and with gratitude. So that is the very first thing that I practice every day upon rising. The second thing that I live by is I immediately make my bed. I like to leave the bedroom in its most pristine state ready to go so that when I enter the bedroom again to get to the bathroom and shower and get ready for the day, I walk into the perfect state of the bedroom. The third thing that I do is start with my morning elixir. My morning elixir consists of two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, cayenne pepper, ginger, and cinnamon. It also entails one entire lime and water. Now I use about eight ounces to 10 ounces of cold water. The fourth thing that I do is I sit down and I get ready to journal. This is the high performance planner. It does not need to be this. It can be anything. But what I like about this is the size. It is pretty large and it comes in various colors. I also love that it has some prompts for morning mindset and evening journaling. I hold this loosely and let me explain what I mean. There were moments that I did utilize the prompts that are set here, but over time I started to personalize it. One of the things that really helps me is to look 90 days out into the future. So I really think it's important to live in the moment, you have the here and now, but plan accordingly towards that desired end goal. What I do is focus on the process and the things that are required to move me towards that goal. I try my best to not obsess on the end result because those end results are out of my control. I focus a lot on the inputs that I am responsible for and that I can control. And what this does is it allows me to really get my thoughts out, sort of like morning pages, and to plan accordingly. So it's really up to you. You can customize it however you want. They help me stay on track and be aligned. Right after I journal, I like to do affirmations. It's very, very simple. Something like my future is bright, writing it down on the same line until I fill the entire page over and over and over. So in one line, I can fit probably six times. My future is bright, my future is bright. It works sort of like hypnosis. I swear it does. When you start, you have all of these different thoughts that keep popping up in your head. But by the time you're in the middle and you complete this, there's a certain sense of peace because you've really done your best to focus on writing the same sentence over and over for an entire page. 
It can take 20 minutes to 35 minutes. The mind will try to deter you and other things will just come up. So I love this because it allows me to really exercise the muscle of this is what I'm doing. I don't want to wander off. I'm going to finish this task. So the high performance planner, you don't need to use this. There's so many that you can use. I like the size of it. I also like the colors. And this is just a regular pad. And I literally write it every morning. These morning practices literally take all together maybe an hour and a half. I wake up at 5.30 in the morning. And literally by 7 a.m., these things are done. The next thing that I do is get ready for the shower so that I can log in my four to five mile run to the gym. Now the gym is actually a little bit over a mile away, but I add mileage by going the long route because I love to run in the morning. It helps me clear my mind and I love to just run with the Henry Hudson River towards my left and then the forest towards my right. It is serene it is something about being out in nature running that is so peaceful first thing in the morning and it's literally as if i was the only one here no one's really out so i love that time and it's just very peaceful and i can always listen to a favorite podcast so for me it's double duty i love to run and also listen to a podcast of choice the next thing that i do when i get to the gym is I usually buy a cup of coffee. Then I walk to the gym and I make sure that I have an hour to max out. That can be a HIIT workout, that can be a full body workout, leg workout, upper body. It's a combination of things. I love to monitor my output and make sure that I maximize that hour. After the gym, I'll either run back the short way, which is just a mile and a half, or I like to walk. The next thing that I do is I love to time block. You look at the week ahead and you plan all of the essentials out. If it's not in my schedule, I really do my best to not touch it. It really allows me to focus my work hours on the most important things. For instance, right now what I am doing is I am scripting content for YouTube. There's a lot of different ideas and there's a lot of references and so I'll do some research but ultimately the scripting can take two and a half hours. So I need to block that time without any interruptions, without any phone to make sure that I'm able to sit down for those two and a half hours. Sometimes it's three because it takes a while and just jot my thoughts down and script what I envision. I am not trying to fix it at that moment. I'm just trying to pour it onto the paper. Then after the two and a half hours to three hours, I take a break. And that is when I prepare a meal. I personally practice restrictive eating. What that is is similar to intermittent fasting, but for me, I eat during a five hour window. That's one, two, six. Sometimes, depending if I'm hungrier than other times or when it's that time of the month, I make some allowances and I will add an hour. So I may start as early as 12, but I need to be done by six. Having this structure has really helped because I am the type of person that if I don't have constraints, I can just be greedy and really overeat. So when I have the five hours, I find it's best because I have two meals that I sit down for. Well, first when I get home, I'll have water with protein and that's it before I start working. About an hour and a half later, I am ready to break my fast, if you will. And so my daily average is 18 hour fast. There are a few days that I may have 19 or 20 hours, but it's not intentional. I just get a little obsessed with the work that I'm doing and I lose track of time and may eat a little bit later. I like to have the same thing pretty much every day. So I will have an egg salad sandwich, I'll have some sausages, or I will have an egg omelet that's four to five whole eggs with some salmon locks, some onions, some spinach, and multi-grain bread, or I'll have Damascus flax flatbread. So it's all contingent on my output. 
If I lift heavy legs, then there's a little bit more room for more caloric intake. The meals are pretty much the same. I don't get very creative, but there is a day during the week that I will go out for a good meal. But again, the time frame. I like to eat at 12 or 1 and my last meal by 5.45. The one practice that I've been practicing for years, and I am going to say, even when I was in college, I would be an early riser and I would go to bed early. I like to be in bed by 8 o'clock, 8.30 p.m., which is why I stop eating by 5.45 because I want to make sure that there isn't any discomfort and that I've digested my food. And I get 8 to 9 hours of sleep. That's how much I need to function optimally and I really prioritize sleep. So by the time I get back, I have eight solid wins under my belt. And that gives me momentum to really tackle the day strong. Those eight little wins compounds. These decisions are already made for me and I've committed to them. So the only thing that I need to do is show up and honor my word. When you are disciplined and you do the required work, it is extremely rewarding. You will feel like you've optimized and maximized the day and your efforts. So friends, those are the practices that I live by. I really believe that when you have some structure in place and systems that can really help you maximize your daily outputs, you have the opportunity to succeed and to become better. And that's really why I implemented all these things. Over time, I've learned what works for me and what doesn't. And the things that have stood the test of time and that have gotten me the optimal results have stayed. Ultimately, it's really up to you what it is that best suits your needs and that will work for your lifestyle choices. I personally believe that we co-create and design the life that we want. It's up to us to take the initiative, be responsible adults, and do the necessary to show up as our best self. Align with higher values and beliefs that give you great, enormous meaning and show up doing the best you can on a daily basis. Remember to consult a doctor, a nutritionist, and a personal trainer, an expert that can help you build and design and customize the right program for you. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought. Sound off in the comments below. Until next time, toodles.